Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Hey, uh, hi, how are you? Welcome to our medley of promos. Uh, the reason we had to have a medley of promos was uh, that for some reason, I don't know, this uh, can happen, I guess. It's, it's part of the goofiness that is running an internet program of this sort. Uh, Damien's uh, encoder uh, didn't stop. And I, it wouldn't clear the channel for me to go on the air, so I had to keep playing perpetual promos uh, so that you could, uh, you could at least uh, hear something uh, when we were doing the, uh, the, uh, uh, the, the video on GabNet. So anyway, we're on now, and everything's fine, and uh, life is, uh, is good, I guess. It's sort of good. It's okay. It's all right. Anyway. Hey, listen, I got a little something tonight, a little presentation here that I threw together. It's not, no big deal. I just, you know, I just did it. It's not, it's actually a boring home movie, about as boring as you can get. I did a day in the, I took my uh, new iPhone out, and I did a day in the life of Alex Bennett. Actually, it's kind of some of the day in the life of Alex Bennett. And uh, I just edited it together today, and I thought I'd show it to you. So here goes nothing, okay? Okay. Mm. Ah, it's morning. And uh, I'm going over to Costco because I need a hard drive. So um, why don't you come along with me and we'll go get the hard drive. Actually, I want to get a mini hard drive, you know. I'm trying to resuscitate an iMac that has a bad hard drive in it. And if I simply get another hard drive, make it the boot hard drive, I think I can get it to, uh, to work fine, you know, or at least be usable. Because I don't want to have to open up that damn thing. It's almost near impossible and replace the hard drive that's already in it. And uh, because it's so old, I don't want to pay to have it done. So now I'm simply trying to get a cab uh, here. Let's see if we can find one. In New York, you can always tell when a cab is available because the light on top is lit. And in this case, we don't see any lit lights. I don't know what happened. This, this corner used to be great for, uh, for getting cabs. And now, I'm going to get run over by a bus. Now it's not as good. Maybe? Do I see a light there? No, I guess I don't. Usually if they're in that lane, they've got somebody. Yeah, maybe the police car will take me. that I could get them in seconds here and uh, now it's, it's getting rougher and rougher and I have no idea why. This used to be a great corner. Oh, there's my apartment. Isn't that beautiful? It was built in 1920. Uh, let me see here. Is this guy available? Uh, I guess he is. Okay. I'm going to Costco. Okay. You know where that is? Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay, good. And the next stop is Costco. Although, you know, we have an app 
for the Alexa and we put all the stuff we want to do when we go shopping. And this week she wants Pellegrino and a box of Pellegrino, very heavy, and I have to take the card. So I decided that I wouldn't get the Pellegrino today and I wouldn't drag the cart with me and I'll do it later in the week. But anyway, this is a, uh, this is a New York City mall actually. Although how much longer are malls going to last, you know? Because with Amazon and things like that, who needs a fucking mall? You've got a mall on your computer. So, anyway, take a look at it while it's still here. Uh, let me get a, uh, I gotta go get a cart. Uh, and then I'm there, I'll just go get one of these. And we'll head on inside. Uh, gotta stop the camera because I have to get my wallet to show them my card. Uh, uh, well, let me see here. Let me, let me get my wallet with my card. Okay? Oh, my thumb is out. Got it. See, I got to get my card out. There we go. This person here. Oh, sorry for the uh, sorry for the bad camera work, but I had to show my wallet. Let's see. Is it, what, why am I? Why do I have this? I don't even need. This. Uh, let me see here. Here we. Go. This is what I'm here. Five terabytes. How much? 119 bucks. Um, well, all they have is the five terabytes. Well, I guess I'll get the five terabytes. Okay. Yeah. That's what I will do. Gee, they've, they've now made these into five terabytes, but of course they charge 20 bucks more for the five terabytes. But if that's all you can get, that's all you can get. This is on Costco, by the way. It's, uh, is it exciting? Yeah, very exciting. Usually they don't even line this long. See that little check mark? They had to okay it because it was a item over a hundred dollars. I've got had items over a hundred dollars before and never had that problem. Costco just keeps getting worse and worse and worse and worse. Just terrible. Anyway. We're gonna go take the car home now. This is where we get them. Uh, cost me 10 bucks to get home. Cost me 10 bucks to go there. I didn't save that much money for this. Uh, yeah, hi. Uh, here we go, thank you. Uh, I'm going to 106. Uh, uh, excuse me, Seventh Avenue between 116th and 117th on the uptown side. One oh six. Ah, what? No. Listen to me. One. I'm going to Seventh Avenue between 116th and 117th on the uptown side. Okay.
Thank you. Thank you very much. There we go. Okay. Mm. And here we are at Rain Court. Let me get out my keys. Sometimes when the camera doesn't exactly stay straight up because I have to do something, so um, here we go. This is how you get in, in case anybody wants to know. Hmm. Here we go. This building is well, it was built in. 1900, so it's uh, it's 18 or 200, 118 years old. Boy, am I bad at addition. It's 218 years old, and there's a very hot. Turns a corner there. There's where we live. Okay. Uh, the uh, landlord doesn't take great care of this building, unfortunately. I mean, our apartment has the wow factor, as we call it. Uh, but, uh, so let me see here. Oh, I to, yeah, that's the right key. Do, 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 do. When I'm doing video, I, uh, there we go. Uh, okay. Let's see, look how terrible this, this lobby looks. Look at the terrible job they did trying to patch that up. Rather than getting tiles to fill in, which a artisan would have to do, they don't fix it at all. And this is just a dingy looking lobby. When I first saw it, I went, how good can that apartment be? And, well, let's go up to the uh, eighth floor, and we'll see how good that apartment can be. Um, I guess I spend half my life in this elevator, because again, the landlords don't care to put a high-speed elevator in, so two, we're going up to the eighth floor. It's not like we're on the second floor and I could just walk up one flight, which would be healthy for me. Of course, walking up eight flights would be even healthier for me, but I, you know, my legs start wearing out about the sixth floor. And so seven and eight are a living hell. But anyway, here we go, we're getting there. We're getting there. Just wanted to see how long this ride is. Have you suffered with pain? Okay. And eight. Jim, I'm teaching everybody how to come and rob us, but you really can't because we have uh, we have a big door with big locks. And when we leave, we have four locks that we can set. So let me see here. Let me can get my big key out here. Here we go. Now, I'll show you the inside of the apartment. You see, it, now this is not as dingy, see? But then again, it's been better taken care of by the people who live on the floor. There are only two other apartments. Um, let me see here. Let me open this up. There we go. It's a little sticky these days. Here we go. Turn the lock. Get that taken care of. Okay. All right. So this is the apartment. This is our... This is our living room, right? With our red was a TV set on the wall. But this is our living room. And then this is our, oh, we have a fireplace, by the way. Uh, and this is our living room. And there's where the iMac is right now that I'm rejuvenating. Uh, it's the only place in the house I had room to do it. Uh, then we go over to, um, the second fireplace on the other side of the first fireplace. We've got a wonderful kitchen here. A lot of room in the kitchen. A little pantry with it in the old days when this was first built. This was the maid's quarters. See, there's a, a bathroom off of it. Uh, and uh, let me see here. Let's go down the hall. Yes, we have a hall. And it's not a, you know, it's a pretty, pretty decently long hall. Here's our, uh, here's our, there we go, our bedroom. Oops, I've got the TV set on. And there are people down in Florida dressed up in their slickers all trying to show how brave they are. And uh, we really have a great view out our window, although you can't see it today because it's a little on the, on the 
dingy sound coming from the sound down here. So you don't have to hear the TV. It's not a nice day today, but what a what a view we get out our window. You can barely see the buildings here, you know, shrouded in in mist. So anyway. But this is our bedroom, this is where we sleep and uh, where we uh, watch TV and do all the other things that a married couple in their late 70s do. Uh, and then we go down the hall. This is where guests stay, actually, and it's also a second studio that I use. Uh, this is the uh, guest room. Not bad, huh? 4K TV set and uh, all the amenities. Uh, we'll even put a mint on your pillow. Oh, and that's uh, next door. They're destroying the apartment. So uh, if you hear hammering, that's what that is. And we got this. And uh, this is the bathroom. Nothing spectacular in the bathroom. And finally, this is the studio and the office. This is uh, where we all do our stuff. Uh, this is the main one that I use for the shows. This is my main computer, my Mac, where I store everything. Uh, this is the server where we, uh, well here, I'll turn it on here for you in a, for a second. You can see, this is where we serve the show, the network, the 24 seven network out. There we go. Okay. Uh, and as you can see, it's, it's transmitting. And finally, uh, this is Marjorie's computer. And there's me reflecting in Marjorie's computer. And this is our uh, this is our little office and studio and everything else. Okay, well, I got some work to do here, installing and uninstalling uh, this thing. So I'll see you in a little while. Uh, what you didn't see is I did my uh, interview that I do once uh, every couple of weeks with Stephen Pearl. Had to do that, okay? And now I am getting myself ready to... Uh, Go down the street and, yes, work out. I think we're through. Because I didn't have a collar and I didn't want to sweat too much. Now I got to go into the pharmacy and go get uh, Marjorie for medicine. <sighs> Nothing better than working up a sweat and then having to shower. If I didn't have to work up the sweat in order to feel good about the shower, I'd do more showers. Uh, let me see here. We got, we only put on a little bit of hot. Just a little bit of hot, a lot of cold. And then uh, we. Uh, it's a little on the hot side. Uh, Let me see if I can turn it down here. Hold on a second. Uh, yeah, this it, this is uh, the hot water is really hot, and the cold water isn't sufficient. So you've got to constantly turn this thing down. Oh, there we go. It's better. Ah, uh, yeah, taking my shower. Well, I can't do my head and all the stuff I got to do while I'm holding this, so. Oh, you can see my ugly body here. Oh, let me see here. Let me, yeah. Uh, it's too wet unless I do this. Bye. Ah, mm. there we go. Nothing nicer than a bathrobe to sop up all the uh, all the juice all right okay all right ah, let me see here i think i have to brush my teeth came home yeah i wanted to catch you coming into the room do you want me to go well, out and come back in again yeah sure come back in we'll restage this okay 
Okay. Okay. Say when. Action. Hello. <laughs> You're home I'm from here. work. Oh dear, is home from sweetheart. Is home from work. Give your lover a kiss. Mwah. There we go. Who is that? Huh? Nobody. Who are you talking Nobody. to? Nobody. I'm just doing a day in the life of me, which oh. can be very boring. Oh, look who I'm watching. Beck. <laughs> uh. Yeah. So did you have a good time at the gym? Oh, I had a wonderful time at the gym. You're not watching the weatherman oh, standing Oh, by the way, your, your laxative isn't ready because it had to be called in. Oh. It, when... it, you ordered it the last one last month, and they didn't... Uh, the month isn't up. I don't know how much I'm using. I'm going through that in a month. She's got to clear out her body. By Friday. By Friday because she's getting a colonoscopy. And it's not a normal clearing out. This is like four months of clearing out. Yeah. No, no, no. It looks good. Uh, don't worry about it. I don't look that great today either. It's just a day in the life of me. And part of the day in the life of me is you and I sitting here. Do you believe that I have to live with? Do you believe that this is it? This is all that I'm going to get? This is it? This is the highlight of my day? Sitting in bed and watching TMZ yeah. with Alex. Yeah. That we watch TMZ every day. This is so pathetic, my life. This is the thing we bond with. This is so pathetic. God help me. What's your problem? I didn't videotape dinner. And that well, was a very good dinner that you made. It was shrimp scampi. Shrimp fried Diablo. Um, there's, there's, there's enough for one more meal tomorrow, so yes, you can have it if you want. But I should have videotaped us eating. Well, at least showing what I it looked like. I forgot that I was doing a day in the life of Alex Bennett. Audience, this guy has too much time on his hands. That's right. Yes, eating dinner. That was the dinner. That's what's left. That's her shrimp scampi was very, very good, in spite of the fact that she served it with noodles, which of course I glommed up because noodles go so good with this. But anyway, sorry you didn't get to see us have dinner, but there's what's left of it. Well, this is kind of the end of our day. Uh, nothing much happened today, you know, and I'm getting ready to do the show, and this is where we do it from. Uh, and, uh, you yeah. know, we're ready to go on the air. So this is kind of the shot you're used to seeing on uh, on the broadcast. Uh, and uh, this is the shot we're going to close with. Uh, so that's a little bit of my day and what happens during the day. And I'm sorry if it was really boring, but I don't live an exciting life any longer. Uh, there's no more life in the passing lane. Anyway, thanks for joining me, and I hope this wasn't too boring. Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before. This is Gavin, the Great American Broadcast Network. Let me turn this up. Okay. Got to get everything right. <laughs> everything everything that go wrong tonight went wrong. Uh, but, uh, at the very beginning of our show tonight, we had a problem with the uh, uh, with the with, uh, uh, what we do is when I, oh, what the hell happened? Jeez almighty. Oh, what was that? Gee, I can't believe what happened. Anyway, uh, okay, well, it's all working okay. All right, all right. Something just decided to go blank on me here. It's a night full of technical problems. Uh, no, what happened was is uh, what happens, Damien does his show. And then when he's through, we have a thing called encoder. And what you do is you, you use the encoder to send the signal uh, to uh, uh, the, uh, the uh, 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 what do you call it, the place that sends out the signal, uh, the uplink and the thing you listen to, the, the stream. Uh, and uh, so when he's through, he turns his off, and then I turn mine on. But if he doesn't turn his off, then I can't turn mine on, uh, uh, we got a problem. Okay, so uh, somehow, and I don't think it was his fault, okay, uh, there was just some kind of ghost in the machine, and the encoder, he may have turned it off, or thought he turned it off, or it may have gone off, but somehow it didn't release the stream, 
Now I can kill the stream from here, but I forgot how to do it because I haven't had to do it in two years. Okay, so because I, I could I only had to do it about two years ago, I had to go back and figure out how to do it. In the meantime, I told him, "Why don't you just kill your modem and stuff, and maybe that'll do it." And it did it, and I had a stream back and. It was a mess, okay? But it's not Damien's fault. It's it's just the it's just the technology. But thank you, Damien, for uh, for for acting very quickly on that. And uh, then I got his show, and whatever glitch there was in his in uh, on his end showed up on the uh, on the final. Uh, he he then uploads, you see, his show to our playlist here, and then I go to that and I make it into stuff so that it has a, it goes on to all the other things. Is this making any kind of sense? Anyway, the fact was that there was a tail on the end of his show that was just nothing, and, and I had to edit that out, and that's probably whatever went wrong went wrong there because it's the encoder that he uses that also records the, 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 uh, uh, the program, all right? Uh, and uh, so consequently I had to do that editing and I did that and I had to change it in the playlist and then I had, you know, and then one thing and, the, and then I'm still trying to do a show here and you're watching the video and, you know, the audio is all over the place because uh, we got a problem. There's a problem with using the iPhone to do a video. I like to say things from behind the camera. The only thing is when the camera is shooting the front, okay, uh, it uses the front microphones, and when I wanted to use the back, it uses the back microphone. So if I'm using the front and I talk from the back, you can't hear me too well because the microphones in the front are picking me up from the back. You get me? So that that's the problem with the, with the iPhone. Got, they got to do something to correct that, to give us the choice of, uh, of having all mics on, you know. But anyway, be that as it may, I hope you enjoyed my little presentation and to see an ugly old man in the shower. Uh, they, you know, not, not a pretty sight. Uh, let me see here, what else? Uh, yeah, so I'm gonna, I opened up the Skype lines and I don't know if anybody's gonna call tonight. Phil isn't gonna call tonight, so that means Tom, you can call if you're out there. Jeff, you can call, all you other people you can call. I would love to hear from you because it would be a great help to me. Plus, my air conditioning, I think, is finally on its last leg. I think I'm going to have to buy a new air conditioner for in here next year. So that's my other thing. Plus, I don't think we're going to have cool summers any longer, right? It just doesn't appear so. So anyway, I'm sitting here waiting for people to call. Uh, and as usual, as I've always threatened in the past, if they don't call... Uh, I'll just uh, end this whole thing early, you know. Uh, but uh, uh, we, our, our lines are open, and you can you can call us. Um, I had a thing happen to me today. I don't know how to say this because I don't want to give up the idea of what. Oh well, I'll, I'll talk about that later. What the hell? Because people are calling, and as long as people are calling, yeah, there we go. How you doing? That's Scott, I'm good. That's Scott Boddicker, ladies and gentlemen. I don't know. And then top of all these problems that I had, for some reason, for a minute or so, for a second or so, all my, my like my, uh, my OBS studio, which is a thing I switched the show with, suddenly disappeared off the screen and then came back. And apparently everything's cool and okay and working fine, you know. But, geez, it's just been one technical glitch after another tonight. So. That was a good show, though. Was, I, I liked your little life. My, my, nice. my life? I mean, my lack of life, really, if you I, think about it. Uh, I hope it? to live so long. Uh, yeah. Oh, D Damien Chaplin, just uh, just give me the thumbs up. Yeah. Thank you, Damien. I mean, you know, uh, who knows what happened on his side? We'll never know, you know. But it, it, it's like... Um, Last night, oh, here comes here comes Rob. Ah, good old Rob. Hey, Rob, how are you this evening? Are you there, Rob? I get, I, get, I Rob, are you there? There he is. Hi, Rob. Hello. Hello. Thank How's you, Rob. Going? By the way, Rob just turned out another promo for me, 
And he said he didn't have a studio to do it in, so he did it by glitching up the whole thing. I don't know. How did you do it? You just stuck the microphone I, in a... No, no, no. The, it's, it's nothing works. I was able to get the microphone to... Uh, first, I couldn't get the internet to work anymore on it for some reason. Yeah. I don't know what the hell... So I couldn't connect to Dropbox and... Uh, I don't know. I haven't even gone up there in months, and I haven't turned it on since the last promo I did for you. That's why I, I'm always down here, you know, in another room, because I'm completely fed up with that room. It's going to take a ton of work to get it back in shape, and I really just don't have... I haven't really felt like I really want to dive in and unplug a whole shit ton of cables yeah. and figure out where problems are, because it's just so much work. Well, in the meantime, in the meantime, you if you want, if I need promos, you can do them whatever way you did it. The sound was just fine. Well, that's good as yeah. long as the sound was the fine. Sound that was, I, and I couldn't even play it back, so I finished it. I edited it right. Yeah. I, I cut out the, all my flubs and stuff, and then I and I did that with headphones on, and uh, and then I went to uh, play it before I sent it to you, and I couldn't hear it. No matter what I tried, I couldn't hear it. Wow. So I have no idea what's wrong in there. Again, it, it's just going to be hours, and I mean hours of work, because it all needs to be disconnected first. And the, you, well, you know how many wires well, that it, uh, is. You know, I have often thought about, you know, the thing is, this is a rat's nest I've got here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And it's a rat nest of wires. Now you say, okay, uh, I, I, I'll, I'll undo everything. I mean... I'll unplug everything and then replug everything together. You know how long that's going to take, folks? Right. That's going to take me at least a week, if not more so. And then we have to hope I remember how everything was wired originally. And you know what? That was my problem because my studio worked perfectly when I was in the old house. I took it apart. It was apart for months. Mm -hmm. Because uh, you know, I was in two different places. I got here and I couldn't. Re I never got it really working properly. Like I could never feed anything from the board through Skype. Don't know why. Can't figure it out. I thought I hooked it up the right way. Uh, so I, so I just I, got fed I, up with it. I just say, uh, good. I'll have the rat's nest of wires. You know, yeah, I think that's probably best. And and if I need to rewire something, it'll be one thing to another thing. You know, and I'll just do it better than I did it before. Yeah, but it, you're it, gonna be on your knees, and uh, it just also, it's gonna be a week. You're right. Also, because these things, these studios, kind of get as they get built, they get built in segments. You know, first right. you put in the computer, and then you put a thing in to make audio go into the computer, and then you buy yourself a control board. And then you cook, hook that into the computer, and one thing after another, by the time you're finished, you've got a whole thing here, and I forget how it works. Tonight, when I had to, uh, when, we ha when I had the situation with Damien and his encoder not unloading, and I'm just, you know, I'm not able to put the program on the air, uh, uh, I, uh, I w I, there is a way for me to kill his signal. And it's a matter of me going to the server uh, that serves out our signal and telling it to kill whatever is going into it right now. It just kills it, and then you can go ahead and do it, right? Uh, I did that maybe two years ago. <laughs> and I couldn't even remember the password to get into it to do it. I finally figured it out after we got everything on, and I just, for my own, you know, my own knowledge i went back and figured out how it worked okay but that took time that uh, you know so I, I i couldn't remember how i did it years ago and 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 that's as it should be actually uh you know how why how are you supposed to remember uh and, and document it. huh document yeah, well yeah you can well I, I i've got it in my mind now i know how to do it but i i'm sure i won't write it down and we'll still continue to have the same problem next time we have the problem i'll have to figure it out all over again but i could have if i had, had, had known what to do immediately i could have done it in, in, a, in a half a minute and killed his signal but i couldn't do that so eh, what the hell you know yeah it's 
just the way things go. But every, everything went wrong. And then all of a sudden I'm sitting here and my uh, OBS suddenly decides to like just disappear. And then it came right back and it didn't stop recording. It didn't stop streaming. So I assume everything's cool with the, with the video. So, hello, Patrick. Hello, Jeff. Hello, hello. Brian. Hello. hello. Hello, trees. Hello. Anyway, uh, let me see here. Yes, 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 Jeff. My life is just about like yours. It's just about I went to Costco. Just, yeah, it's just <laughs> just a, just about as dull, huh? <laughs> That's true. Yeah, um, and, yeah and, and, and then so. and then you had that, and you also know you you probably since you don't have a camera on you, you don't know what it looks like to be an old man in a shower. You know, uh, so. I know one guy, and it's me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now that I've added you to my uh, it didn't look, shower list. It didn't look that terrible. <laughs> it's just that, you know, everything that used to go up now goes down. That's all, you know. It's all it's all a matter of as you get older, gravity is your worst enemy. That's true. That's true. Hmm. The rest of you kids who are there don't have to put up with that. I had a a, a, a strange thing happen to me. Let me let me tell you the story i don't want to name names i don't want to say where or who or anything like that because i you know i god knows i i solve the problem but uh my friend walter sabo was in and i said to him i know somebody who's taking over to certain station here in the country uh could you get a hold of that person they're in san francisco and um uh he said, okay, uh, sure, be happy to. And he wrote him a note and said, you know, Alex Bennett, you may know of, blah, 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 blah. And the guy wrote back, oh, I know Alex. He used to put down my radio station. And one day he sent over his guy to give us a bad time, and I have been pissed at him ever since. Pieces. <laughs> uh, and all of a sudden I went, you know, something I did, what, 35 years ago has come back to haunt me, and I didn't know the guy was bothered by it. And I don't even remember it happening, okay? I just it was another one of those stunts you do where there's a station across town and you bash them a lot and then you send somebody over to give them a, oh, I don't know, bring them flowers or something. You do some wacky stunt, right? Uh, in this case, I had a guy with him, Chuck Farnham, and he probably showed up naked or something in their lobby. But in any event, he, he wrote him back and said, I have just never forgiven him for that and I'm still pissed, you know? Wow. Oh, wow. So I felt really bad about that, you know, because what you do in the heat of competition in broadcasting, you know, if somebody did something against me, I just somehow would go, well, you know, when, when Stern has said things about me, like stealing from him and stuff like that, I've let it kind of roll off my back because, uh, you know, off the air, I've heard that he, he admired the work that I did, all right? So, you know, you're one thing on the air and you're another thing off the air. And I, so what you do in the heat of competition, I never really hold against somebody. Uh, but apparently, uh, he, was, he was really hurt by this. So I wrote him a note, I note back because I saw the note he wrote to Walter and I wrote him back and I said, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm profoundly sorry. Uh, I profoundly apologize. Uh, and I didn't say this because I wanted a job out of him or... Uh, I wanted to ease my conscience. I just don't want somebody to be mad at me for 35 years uh, when, uh, you know, if he just called me, I would have said I was sorry at the time, right? Um, but that was really kind of an, it, it kind of, it really got to me. It made me feel really bad. I think that people in the business, though, understand sticky things and, you know, you might be mad in the moment, yeah. but for 35 years to hold on to that, he knows that you're doing shtick on the air. You know, it's yeah. all for well, what he said it's he all was for bothered, the show. What he said he was bothered by was the guy that we sent over to the sta to his station to, like, not prank him or whatever. And uh, I, to be honest with you, uh, to be totally honest with you, I don't remember the incident. But, you know, and, and I, didn't, I didn't do what made him mad. But the, whoever was doing it was doing it on my watch, so I take responsibility for it, you know. But I, I just, I, I felt so bad about it, not because I maybe could get a job out of him and now I'm not going to be able to, 
but because I really just genuinely felt bad that I had hurt somebody enough that, you know, 35 years later, he goes, I'm still pissed at him, <laughs> you know? So I apologize. You know, I, I wrote him and I apologize. I was sincere about it, too. I just said, you know, That's we cool. all do things in the heat of competition that we later regret, you know? And uh, so uh, I, I had that problem with San Francisco, though, as a market. Uh, because once I was out of work, there weren't a lot of people lining up to hire me, even though I was a major name in that town, because the town was somewhat petty in that respect. You know, if you were their competition and you were you had this reputation on the air, they didn't think, oh, well, maybe he's just a compl I'd like to meet him. He's probably a completely different guy, you know, to do business with. And I was a I was pretty much a gem to work for work with. You know, I was never a headache for, for the most part, never a headache for my bosses. And so, uh, uh, but San Francisco was a little petty that way. And uh, once you were off the air and you were their competition, you were still their competition. You know, rather than saying, hey, he was our competition. Now let's make him one of us so he can be somebody else's competition for us. Right, it's gamesmanship. Yeah, so, but in any other market like New York, that would be a factor. You know, that's why Stern got fired from one station and got hired by another. Right. You know, uh, but uh, I just, I felt, I felt so bad about it. it just, it, so I, I wrote, that's why I wrote him a letter because I felt bad about it. I didn't want, I didn't want the end of my life to come with somebody being mad at me. <laughs> I guess, I don't know, you know. But that, that was my, that was my day to day. Uh, so, anyway, another job I won't get. Uh, anyway, so it's, you know, pretty much the end of the old career. Oh, well, I knew that a while back, you know. So. But anyway, once a year when he goes on vacation, I'll get a chance to substitute for Walter, Walter Sterling. So that's, that's nice to know, you know. Anyway. So, um, um, Rob, how's work? I haven't asked you. How's your job doing? Well, very good. Yeah, can't complain. Busy. Yeah, and you're happy with it? Yeah. Yeah, they treat you well. Yeah, yeah. you can't complain. Yeah. Things are good. Yeah, I'll have to buy one of their computers someday. <laughs> Say, Rob. We don't sell computers. Oh, you don't anymore? You sold that part of the business to somebody else? Yeah, to HP. Well, wait a minute. Aren't you still HP, though? No, I work for the <laughs> other company, the other, the split of the company. So we I, sell only data center equipment. I don't sell printers or server or uh, you don't desktops sell ink? or laptops. Don't sell ink. Yeah, none of that. I only sell data center stuff. Okay, but but are you still, well, we can say the name HP? HPE Enterprise. Oh, the see. other okay. one's HP in Incorporated. And are they two separate companies that... Operate completely they are independent com of each other. Completely so separate stock. Everything is separate. So the when board, they, some of the board members are the same, but the companies are separate. Well, but when they they're completely separate. <laughs> 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 when they when they split them up, uh, uh, who went where? I mean, it, it it's kind of like who gets possession of the child. What do you mean? You well, mean like the the real estate? Well, I mean, did they did they split up because they definitely wanted to be two different companies who did two different things, or did they? It was a behemoth company. It okay. was just too large to really be oh, okay. agile. Okay, so and, the reason they, was they to, felt they needed to, yeah. you know, make it more focused. Okay, so they did one thing, and then they, you know, that so. Well, when you've got the, uh, the, uh, the, the businesses for the home, you know, the computers, the home computers, that is a completely different business than data centers. Oh, absolutely. It's, uh, yeah. there's, no, there's nothing that's similar about it. It's yeah. a completely different audience, a completely different product set. Yeah. yeah. Now, Jason, Jason tonight is at the car show. <laughs> hey, he's, he's doing what I normally do, sit in front of the car. Yeah, he's yeah. sitting in front of his. Is that your? That's your car. Yeah. Yeah. Normally, I've been in the garage the last few times, but we finally actually, actually, my I have to use the wife's truck tomorrow. But 
So I parked a car in here because we'll probably get some frost. So yeah. I want the windshield be frozen over for. Yeah. So you're you're, you're ready. In, you're in the garage, and where is she? Sleeping. Really? Shh. Oh, so you're... she has to work tomorrow. It's only yeah. tomorrow's Friday. So ah, I see. Yeah. So my you're... wife's sleeping too because she's got to work four o'clock in the morning. My, my wife's sleeping right now because she's got to work. Yeah, let's put these bitches to we're, work. Yeah, we're a bunch of pimps, aren't we? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, uh, anyway. Uh, I get to work from home. She's got to get out. She's got to be up at 3 in the morning to be at work. Yeah. What's new What's new with your life, Patrick? Uh, not a whole hell of a lot. Okay, thank you, Patrick. <laughs> I don't know. Boy, I, I'll tell you, I start off this show with a very boring video of my day. Okay, and then I ask people what they do, what they did, what's new, and you go, nothing. Uh, yeah. I got something new. Oh, you had something new? Oh, Jeff, I, Jeff had some I excitement started, in his life. Go ahead, Jeff. It started yesterday. Yeah? I had a back pain that was incredibly bad. Oh, really? Yeah, in the spine. And so I went, it just so happened, at the same time, I was having some problems with my feet, which are kind of your area. But yeah. anyway, so I go to this doctor that I'd never gone to before. And at the same day I go, my spine get to be incredible. I couldn't even walk. I was walking like I was 110 years old. You know, always ahead. Yeah, yeah one of those deals. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. And uh, anyway, I got pretty well figured out, find out what the problem is. And mm -hmm. uh, inside the spine is all of these nice fluids that are supposed to go around. Oh, it's supposed to every every they make spine. your... Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Spring a lake. Well, not extremely weak, but it got it got stiffed in those places. Yeah, and, uh, it wasn't flowing enough. So, so, so what did how they, they fix that? Gave me a couple of drugs, and I went to physical therapy. That I have a new stress organization oh, I have to do every day. Oh boy! But the drug is starting to work see i don't like physical therapy you know what i don't like about physical therapy it's the only form of let you have to do something let's say medicine yes <laughs> it's the only form of medicine where they give you homework <laughs> you know and you're going wait a minute aren't you supposed to like just crack my back or something and then i can go home and feel better till i see you next time no oh, here, here are these rubber bands put them between your legs and stretch them <laughs> 20 times, three times a day. And it's going, annoying. That's mm -hmm. fucking annoying. You know, the only thing that he gave me that's really kind of been fun is a golf ball. I told you about the golf ball. I've got it right down here while I'm doing the show. I'm glad I remem remembered it. Uh, I just uh, roll it around kind of like mm -hmm. I'm, I'm almost like I'm tenderizing meat, you know. <laughs> To do away with the fasciitis, so that's that's. So, cool. hey, Alex, have you ever tried buying the actual the little thing that you can get at the drugstore for like twenty bucks? It's a piece of plastic and some Velcro that you put on your foot, and it kind of helps hold your foot like this over nighttime, and it stretches the tendons and stuff out. No, no. That's what you're supposed. You know, it's that what I've used for plantar fasciitis. <laughs> You know what I did for plantar, a long time ago, I had plantar fasciitis. In case people don't know what we're talking about, and this even happened, this happened to me when I was young. Uh, mm. your, your, your foot uh, has a strap in it, and uh, as you're walking, it stretches out, and it's fine. But then when you go to sleep, it tightens up, and when you wake up in the morning, your foot is killing you. Okay? Yeah. So uh, I, um, I had that. And she went out and uh, the uh, or, or, orth, orthopedist, whatever she was, yeah, I guess, mm -hmm. or, orthopedist, uh, she made up uh, a, a, a sh thing to go in my shoe, an orthotic. That's right. What called, mm -hmm. Right? And I put in the orthotic, and guess what? Uh, my planters didn't go away. It was Got still worse. killing me. 
<laughs> so I just gave up on the orthotic, and I said, I'll just go along with this pain and hope that it eventually goes away. And what I did in the meantime is I was in a shoe store one day, and I bought some rock ports. You know what rock ports are? They're a dress shoe that they say is like a sneaker. In other words, it has all the comfort of a sneaker, but it has all the look of a dress shoe. So I bought a pair of these just for the hell of it, you know, because they look good. And I figured, hey, if they're comfy, that'd be nice, too. Then I can be wearing some nice shoes while I'm, you know, with jeans, which is always a nice look, you know. And no one will know I'm really wearing tennis shoes uh, in, in, a, in, a, in a regular shoe form. And I started wearing these rock ports, and my planters went away. Just completely cleared up. All it took was a good make a shoe to do it. Yep. And uh, so uh, uh, for years I was wearing rock ports, but now I'm back to tennis shoes again. That's probably why I got the problem with the, not the numbness in the feet, but the plantar's fasciitis. So, or fasciitis or what? I don't know. Yeah, it's fasciitis. Fasciitis. It sounds like something uh, Mussolini would get. Fasciitis, yeah. <laughs> you know. See, with my work boots, I... I have to, uh, my, the soles get worn down on like the outside edge, so it makes mm -hmm. me start walking a little crooked. Or I don't get the right, you know, I have to buy new insoles like every six months because I'm on my feet all day long. So mm -hmm. I'll end up getting it. It's more my left foot than anything. But in, ca in case the kids have just joined the program, the youngins, uh, <laughs> welcome to Oh My Aching Feet. <laughs> yeah. Hey, listen, we don't even want to talk about all the things that are bothering Patrick. Oh, yeah. yeah. Hey, Patrick, how are your feet feeling? <laughs> I've had a sore on the heel of my left foot that happened from a uh, callus that was ripped off back in February. Oh, yeah. And it taken up until this last doctor visit Monday for them to tell me you probably only have one more visit and then it it done because it went from about the size of a quarter uh -huh. to about the size of a pinhead um what do you mean about the size of a trump <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah sure you can say that um so that that's exciting news for me that's very exciting now, let me ask you this question, though, because on the bottom of your foot, but you have no feeling in the bottom of your feet. But the problem is everybody here drives, correct? Yeah. Okay. Yes. So when we drive, our feet do not sit flat on the on the floor. It We usually uh, cradle on, on our heels. Right. Right. That's where all the pressure is. So this entire summer and spring and now right now at the beginning of fall i haven't done what i normally do which is go out and do shit all the time mm -hmm. because i couldn't drive for a long time because of the pressure on the heel i had to make sure that the damn thing was well my qu no but my question to you is if if you if you are paralyzed from the waist down okay uh, uh, why do you need your heels to be in any particular position when you're driving? Yeah. You drive your car using uh, things, Hand right? Controls. Hand yeah, controls. Yeah, but it, it, it's still the same way that you're, when you drive, you're using your right foot, but your left leg, you usually have out yeah. you know, in front of you uh, in some fashion and, and not sitting like you're sitting in the chair. Right. So it's the same for me. My feet... I don't sit like I'm in the chair and my feet flat. They're out in front of me. So okay. uh, it's the same it, it's the same position driving as anyone else. By the way, I never asked you this. How much does it cost you to trick out a car so that you can do it with hand controls? Well, uh, originally it was uh, $800 out of pocket. Mm -hmm. And then GM or Ford or Chrysler, they will reimburse you. Oh, really? For, yeah. Really? It, it, it's weird. It, you have to pay out of pocket, and then they'll send you a check. Instead of just doing it through the dealership, they want to do it through you. But this last car that I got, the dealership bought me brand new hand controls and paid to have them installed. So, But I've been going to the same dealership for 
in 98, yeah. so 20 years. So, wow. Patrick, can you buy a pumice stone and just when you take a shower, just kind of smooth out your feet? That isn't that isn't what the issue was. Um, it, it it was you would have to say my wheelchair. I happened. I was taking my sock off. I remember doing it, and I don't take my socks off like you do. It, it I got to do them with my legs out in front of me. It, it's a big fucking deal. Don't but you I, get the little things I bought at buy on TV? Way, yeah, seen on way, TV. Take you, your socks off. Yeah, do you realize in this program we've gone from <laughs> oh my aching back to oh my aching feet? <laughs> Mine don't ache. Um, I use that because I can't lift my leg up on my own, so yeah, I can't do that sort of thing. But anyway, pulling the sock off and my foot slipped off of a plate that my feet sit on, and and. You may see me do time to time like I'm doing now, readjust myself in the chair. Yeah. Um, so that you're not sitting in one place for too long. Well, your foot was caught. My foot was out in front of me, and it just happened to catch what was a small callus and ripped it off. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! 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 Exactly. And but the thing is, oh, that go, go into that story, and I'll go into the time I burnt my penis. Okay. <laughs> and the three months it took for it to clear up because every time I went to sleep, it would adhere to the sheet, and then I'd roll over in the middle of the night. How is that? Is that did that top him for that ripping off of the callus? Ouch! <laughs> you never heard that story, Scott? I heard it. You, you did it hit when you were in the oven or something. I was barbecuing <laughs> ribs in the oven. And Look I happened to be. Oven, you pull out the rack. I, your dick I, your rack. I was taking a shower and I came to turn over the ribs or whatever, and I pulled out the rack, and the rack came out and hit my penis, and yeah, and I I went, that's that's <laughs> gonna hurt for a while. It was my first impression. It always and, hurts and, me every time you and, tell me that. And I gotta it, get a beer. It took it, <laughs> it it took three months to clear itself up, but the worst part was when it would adhere to the sheets and rip itself off in the middle of the night. Oh, oh man. <laughs> and and I always had a little scar there, which was kind of cute. It's kind of gone now, but I used to have a scar there. Uh, and that was at the height of my sexuality. This was driving me nuts, you know. Did you go to the doctor to get it fixed? No. What do you do? You go to your doctor and, oh, yeah, I'm going to go to a doctor and tell him what a fucking idiot I was, right? And here's the other part where I was an idiot. I went... What do you do for a burn? Oh, I know what I'll do. I'll put butter on it. <laughs> well, you don't put butter on a burn because all you're cool. doing is you're pretty much basting it. Okay? Yeah, right, right. Uh, what you should do is put ice on it. And if I had iced it immediately, I might not have had the problem I had. But, oh, it was... It, I, when it happened, the minute it happened, I went, oh, fuck. <laughs> because it didn't hurt immediately, you know. It was just I smelled the burning flesh. But anyway, that's that's another story altogether. And I told this story on the air. I mean, I was... I, I never heard it before. You never heard this story before? Oh, boy. No, I guess I missed yeah, it. I didn't put it in Life in the Passing Lane. Maybe I should do an addendum to it. Yeah, uh, with, with all to. these. <laughs> huh? You need to. That would be a good one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you should have uh, at least called for a nurse. Yeah, I yeah. should have. Shouldn't I have? <laughs> uh, no, but I didn't even go to a doctor on it. I mean, I knew what I had done. I knew it was going to take away. Because the trouble is, if I had burned myself on my hand, let's say, mm -hmm. uh, and, oh, we lost Brian. Um, uh, if I burned myself on my hand, uh, uh you know, it would clear up in a couple of weeks or something like that. Because, in fact, I burned myself on my finger the a couple of, about a week ago, and it's just clearing up now. When it's something that's in your pants, that's a different story altogether. Because there is no way that air gets to it. it it's a very moist area, so it stays moist, and uh, it, it has a much harder time clearing up. Uh, so. That was that was my worst injury ever, I think. You know. 
<laughs> that's, that's worse than my paralysis. I, I would say, <laughs> if I were to, if I were to say, what would I rather be, paralyzed or have my penis burned again? I'd say, <laughs> I'd say I would rather, I would rather be uh, a toughie. Be 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 <laughs> paralyzed. Yeah, uh, uh, but not from the waist uh, down, but like from the top of my legs down. Uh, you know, because otherwise my penis isn't going to work anyway. But then again, I can burn it all I want. Yeah. So you know, I mean, that that's the thing. It doesn't work. It, you can't feel it. So you know, when I think that I've got, you know, I'm always complaining about m medical stuff and and this thing with my with my feet. But it really bothers me. It's really it's really a pain in the ass. It hurts all. You know, it's just numb all the time and hurts and. You know, this medicine he gave me isn't particularly working, and it does make me sleep really well every night and still have enough energy to really do a show here. But uh, 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 I, when I think about that, I do think, and it, pardon me if I say this, Patrick, but when I start complaining about my health, I start thinking about you. And all the, all the negatives you've had in your life physically that you've overcome, you just... You know, you just keep going on. And I sit there and go, what the fuck am I complaining about my numb feet for? You know, he can't feel his, you know. And so I, uh, you know, I, it's, it's like I've, I've started getting to the point where I just, uh, I, I think about other people that I know, people who are sick, for instance, and really sick. I think, uh, I, I never had anything like Jeff. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. knock on wood. I've, I've never had something that impacted me that much. I've just had stuff to complain about. That's all. <laughs> See, when you have a major thing like that, uh, I, I assume Patrick really responded the same way that I did. To, like when I had a stroke and things like that. He's, you you got to make a choice. And, and the choice is either you're going to try to continue your, your life yeah. And do the best you can. Right. Or what else do you? Well, I don't want to say it, but people have guns to solution. Yeah. Well, uh, you you persevere. Right. You That's it. You tough. Go ahead, Patrick. Yeah, Patrick. Um, when I was at the hospital on Monday, there was a nurse walking down the hallway and asked if I wanted a push, and I said, "No, I'm I'm good." She said, I know I was just kind of joking because I've seen you around here all the time. She said, and you always have a smile on your face. And I said, well, what, what else am I supposed to do? She said, well, you'd be surprised the number of people in your position that do not have the same disposition. And I said, well, you make a decision, just like Jeff just said. I said, you either go on with life or you give up. And I said, and the thing that helped me it with enjoying life even beyond everything else is doing volunteer work with handicapped people and i do that you know i'm going to be doing it tomorrow yeah. so it you know it, it's a way to give back and yeah brian I don't know. you have your hand up i was just going to identify that as well for those who do choose the latter option to give up uh, i'm tired of pe hearing people uh penalize and uh, um, condescend on them because you know that is a valid op that is as much a valid option as the as the option that both uh, people like Jeff and Patrick have pursued yeah. if a person wants to end their life on account of the fact that their quality of life can never be regained to 100% of what it was before um, that is their decision respect it and realize it's just as valid well, you know, I, I uh, maybe I, I'm speaking for Patrick here, but I would say that my philosophy, it, well, to begin with, if it, what happened to Patrick happened to me, I'd be one of those whiny bitches uh, too, who I would think. be constantly complaining. You too, Rob? Oh, I'm, yeah. I'm miserable. The, the only thing, the day. only positive value <laughs> I would see in, in being paralyzed like that is that I can go to Costco and use one of their carts and run people down. You know, uh, on your way to get your depends. On the way to get my depends, exactly. Uh, oh, I, mean, I know I would. I'd embrace embrace the suck. Some concoctions to make which to take that's my own life off. That's a great. That's a great hat. Embrace the suck. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. It's, it, it's a good motto. 
Also, remember you're talking to a person who, while he was incarcerated and alive still, that uh, he thought that Dr. Jack Kevorkian was a war criminal that should have been awarded treatment as such. Who is this? When Dr. Jack Kevorkian oh. was uh, incarcerated for having uh, doled out mercy to those who righteously sought it, yeah. uh, you're talking to an ideologue, me, who thought that he should have been afforded prisoner of war status. Yeah, well... Yeah. First of all, he didn't. He didn't kill anybody. He no, only he, didn't. he he let them do it. He only and he and he he meticulously recorded every conversation on videotape, and all he did was help people who made a decision in life that this wasn't for them. You can tell that people like Al Pacino afforded him that respect as well, considering the conversations that Jack of working himself on Bill Maher's program. Not long before he did die, uh, say uh, they had. Well, uh, you don't know Jack was being filmed for HBO. Yeah, well, I, it yeah. was a good movie. I don't know if you saw it, Rob, but you should. Well, well, when I when I worked at Court TV, we covered the Kevorkian trial, so I'm very familiar with it, and and saw a lot of the video footage that he took. Um, and he was he was very very respectful and 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 you'd have to go through months and months of months of psychiatric, uh, you know, uh, evaluation. He wasn't just you, you didn't just call him up and say, hey, can you help me kill myself? That Even though not, I mean, yeah, more extreme than that. And I guess they did the months and months of psyche evaluation. So he because he had to cover his ass, which is understandable. Well, understandable. but do you know what? Do you know what? There is no way if I found out that I had ALS that I want to die of ALS. Right. And a lot of his people, his patients were ALS patients. That is just a horrible way to die. And it, you know, these people, they all say, I just want control. I want to control how it happens. I don't want to choke to death. Yeah. How many states in the union now have legalized uh, none uh, state state? Well, no, I, I, there's there there's like two that had state assisted suicide. Oregon's one, and well, Oregon. Uh, I think. Oregon. Right. I don't think you have to do anything, but uh, doctor gives you a prescription or something, and that's it. Yeah. You know? I, don't, well, I think you have to have two doctors that have to prescribe it. Yeah. Yeah, I believe it's two. And, but, th and yeah. then you then you do it, and also marijuana is legal in that state. So what you can do is get high while you're doing it. Hell yeah. uh, <laughs> hello, Ray Renati, by the way. Are you back in hey. California? Yep. Oh, okay. We're here. Because last time I saw him, he was live and in person. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Uh, uh, yes, Patrick. Try and get this sound louder. Um. Uh, uh is reminding me. I was in the house when I got there. There was a kid at the end of the hallway. He was 17. And this is where I, where I became okay with assisted suicide. Because this kid, he was 17, and his girlfriend, and he were in a vehicle. She rolled it. She ended up with some busted bones, and he ended up um, a tetraplegic from the yeah. neck down, and was unable to speak, was unable to do anything other than blink his eyes for yes or no sort of thing. And there were days where I would be in the therapy room with him doing physical therapy. Now, I was actually doing things, and they would have his arm in a sling and move it, and that sort of thing. And then they tell him, oh, what a good job he was doing. And the one thing that got me where I thought, this kid, his brain's working, but he knows nothing else is. What is there to look for? When I saw them throwing a ball at him, <laughs> like he would catch it, and it would bounce off his chest, and they'd say, good try. And I thought, oh, my God. You know, talk about mental torture, and that this kid is going to be too bad against his will forever. He's going to be in his 70s or 80s, and he's going to be in some facility, and he's going to go insane inside his own I brain. remember you telling me this story, and I remember when I asked you, Patrick, is there any way you could have asked him to uh, blink once or twice for a yes or no if he wanted to take his own life? Of course, you told me it was not your place to ask him that, and that's understandable. I, I, yeah, I can understand why you would say that, but still, I, I am curious. 
I can um, I can imagine what the answer would be. Yes, yeah. take me off. Well, I, and and uh, the hard part is he can't really communicate that. No, he yeah. can't. It's a, 15 years ago, I was paralyzed. That kid was 17 then. Now, yeah. he's, what, 32? Yeah. Listen, I gotta, I gotta tell you. And his girlfriend's. What's even more? Add insult and, and salt to the wound. Uh, his girlfriend's living large and probably riding some other cock. <laughs> Getting off. Boy, you always yeah, bring it down to laugh, that, but, don't you? you laugh. I'm not trying to be funny. I'm just. It's. Yeah. Well, no uh, uh, be sure to tell. Next time you see him, Patrick, be sure to tell him that. <laughs> um. You know, uh, there's a show. It's funny. I'm not into network television, but I got hooked on this show because I think it's the one that my ex-wife told me to watch, but I don't know if it is. But it, I, it's called The Resident, and it's it's about a hospital, and it's about a resident and a couple of other people who are residents and some doctors and stuff like mm -hmm. that. But it's a different kind. You know, I don't like these medical shows. I get sick of them. It's They're a modern-day version of House. Well, it's not a modern day version of House. It's oh, a modern. I think it is. I watch it, every episode. I like it. It's, it's a, a little show. bit House, but it's a lot complaining about the uh, medical business system we of, have now. The, the business of medicine. Yeah, and, and this one episode I was just watching tonight, there was this guy, and he was old, and he was he had cancer at four, stage four cancer. But they wanted to do some biopsies and things like that. And he says, I don't want any of that. I just want to go home and be with my wife and, and, and when the time comes, die. And uh, they, they, the interns are like, you know, the residents, rather, are fighting for this guy to be able to just get out of the chair, go home, and finish off his days in, in, in relative happiness with his wife. And, you know, that's what we don't allow people to do today. You know, we don't we don't tell them that one of your options here is to just go home and enjoy yourself and don't go through any of the of the stuff. Okay. And maybe hear something when you had a good night to be able to have that be your last night. Yeah. 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 Yes, uh, Brian. And to delineate slightly from this conversation, still on medical drama talk, um, I I was thinking about this for the last two years or so. Uh, if any network would have the balls to air uh, a medical drama period piece set during the 1960s or like late 1950s, you know, before Roe v. Wade, I'd love to see something like that. Well, you know, you know what? Also on this show, one of the episodes, this is how they they tackle two big problems at the same time. And I, uh, Jason seems to say he's seen the show, so he knows what I'm talking about. One of the episodes I watched was about a woman who gets sick in the hospital and she needs something which is going to she's not she it, she doesn't have medical insurance and she's an illegal alien and the hospital doesn't want to have to deal with her because it's going to cost them two million dollars for the work she needs to have done plus she's an illegal alien so they were dealing with both these topics at the same time and it was it's really Hippocratic oath it's a very sounds, good show. If you get a chance, sounds to watch like it. the it sounds like the uh, the good doctor on ABC Do they, about about the uh, autistic doc uh, surgeon. Yeah, yeah, that's a good show. But the only reason he's that. good is because he's autistic. Uh, yeah. But they ca they tackle those kinds of issues as well. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, it it uh, it has a, more to do with the politics of medicine than anything, and doctors who are. You know the big doctors at the hospital, uh, the 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 biggest surgeon at the hospital, the money maker for them, uh, has has the shakes, and but he doesn't let anybody know, and he's trying to hide it. I haven't. I've only got to episode seven, so don't tell me how it turns out. Uh, Everybody uh, dies. Everybody <laughs> dies, right? Well, a hundred years from now, everybody will die. Everybody but you, you play. would agree with me, Jason, and you're you're kind of a you're, you're you're kind of a stickler for this kind of stuff. It is a good show. I'm not yeah, mistaken. Yeah, yeah, it's a good show. I like it a lot. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, um, so anyway, let me talk. Let's let's get it a little bit. You know, we haven't talked much about politics at all this yeah, week. Yeah, one thousand point Dow drop over the last forty eight hours. Well, we've had we've had a one uh, over one thousand thirteen hundred yeah, no, uh, thirteen hundred uh, points. It's just down. a correction. 
Yeah. 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 Maybe it's the impending crash. I hope so. No, I don't think it's the impending crash, but I, I hardly think... That I get sick and tired when they say it's a correction. It, it, nothing's a correction where I just lost... Let me think of how much money I lost. Uh, I, 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 I probably lost many thousands of dollars. You know, We all because, have. Because of it. Uh, and and uh, so I want Trump to parse this well. I, now he's blaming the Fed. That's what he's doing. He's blaming the Fed. It's not. Well, let's hope by this time tomorrow we're talking about a third dip. Well, I, we, uh, we may, but usually, I, usually it doesn't go three days in a row. Usually there's some kind of a, a, a change, but it's not going to be like a massive one thousand up. You know? Then again, I'm like Jack. I'm a bit of an anarchist myself, so. Luckily, in this one, I didn't take too much of a hit in my 401k. My 401k has actually recovered from the hit it took throughout this year. You know, originally, I think I ended up losing over 10, 10 to, what was it, $12,000, I think, I lost. And then uh, I finally gained it back. And then with this correction, I haven't lost anything so far, so... Done lucky. AT and T stock's been holding pretty tight. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. Uh, you know why? Because I bought a watch and I'm using their cell service. <laughs> Thank you, Alex. <laughs> yeah. Um, Must have been it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, I haven't had buyer's remorse yet on this thing. Not no buyer's remorse. What time is it, Mickey? Oh, it's. Uh, <laughs> oh, Good night. <laughs> Did somebody just say something? Oh, wait a minute. Somebody just sent me a message. Uh, Phil Meyer sent me a photo. I'm going to look at it later. Here we go. It's 11.25. Okay. And if you do it enough, it'll laugh. It's 11.25. Ha-ha! <laughs> no, don't do that! <laughs> Here we go. It's 11.26. Okay. It's 11.26. <laughs> See, there he laughed. That was him laughing. Yeah, I heard it. Okay. Uh -huh. Anyway, so and then the mini does the same thing. I think Christmas is it's going to be a Christmas gift this year. I'll I'm tell you get something. I, it it it's so much better than the other watch. I can't believe it. To begin with, the screen's bigger and the picture is clearer because it's higher resolution, and it's brighter and the sound is louder. I, in fact, I talk to people on the phone all the time, and I'm just sitting here like this talking to them. So it, I thought nobody calls you on the phone. Well, nobody does. But when, How are you talking about it all Well, the time? occasionally girl, girlfriend will call me, or uh, who did I talk to somebody today? Oh no, I t well I had to talk to uh, 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 Jack Bishop last night because once a week he has some kind of technical problem, and uh, so last night we I, I you know there's a story there's a thing I tell my wife and there's a thing I told Jack and nobody ever listens to me because they forget this piece of information. When you find the computer isn't working or it isn't doing something, like you can't sign in, it won't f do something, reboot it. Sure that the power cord is plugged in. No, reboot it. Just reboot it. First thing. And, and first Always. thing. And probably all your problems will be solved. All right? Yes, but my wife keeps going to me. She goes, I can't get this to work. And I go, what is the first rule? I don't remember. <laughs> I keep telling her, <laughs> reboot. If it doesn't, if you can't get it to work, reboot. Then if it yeah, still doesn't... remember to nag the shit out of me, but you can't remember to turn a fucking pop computer off. <laughs> uh, Who are you talking I, about? I would say the first one is to delete your cookies. Uh, uh, that's, well, that's if it's a browser issue. Uh, that's if it's a browser issue. But yeah, if, if this oh, was man, a, I've had plenty of issues with my computer and deleting my cookies as a result. Thing, first thing is to reboot. Uh, Usually it, do that, Jason, through yeah. uh, antivirus cleanup or whatever. It'll clean the cookies up for me and all that bullshit. Yeah, well, I but have that, to... uh, typically happens after I do the first roll, which is to reboot the machine. If it starts yes. acting up, and then I start thinking, yeah, it's something internal, and i got to clean it out. Now, did anybody today see what may be the most entertaining show I've seen on television in years? Kanye West at the White House. <laughs> oh, that. No. Oh my! I put fucking. this hat on. I'm Superman. He said, "Yeah." The minute I put on the g g g Make America Great Make Again America hat, great again. yeah, I felt I was Superman. Oh, oh 
Oh, yeah. Remember this hydrogen-powered plane. You and, need to be driving he, this hydrogen-powered plane. He only you talked to him. Time he, I said that I hope that Donald Trump has a stroke on air. Yeah. Well, I hope that Kanye West has a fucking nervous breakdown on air. Oh, they, no. They he, wait, He's already had it. Him. He's already had it. He had it today. They say that somebody was taking count that in 10 minutes he switched topics that he was rattling on about 40 times. Kanye did? Yeah. Was he frothing you, at the mouth at all? You really have to go if you if you have any place you can go and, and see a replay of it. You got to just watch it. It is. I tell you, since Kavanaugh, I've given up the news again because I just can't. I can't deal with this with all the craziness going on. Well, well you heard about uh, Justice John Roberts, right? Wanting no. To, uh, wanting to uh, contact and touch base with the Tenth Circuit again to conduct to. Uh, Reevaluate the ethics investigation, whatever it was. Really, Alex may know better than this, or somebody else here might, or Scott even might. What, what, what do you say, Ray? Well, Kim Kardashian said that she's planning on one day running for president, and if she wins, Kanye will be our first husband. That'll work. Uh, oh boy. That works for well, me. Well, Kanye and said, could, it, and she it, could win, it, and and he'd be the first man. Uh, yeah, she probably could win, Rob. <laughs> It is superficial as, as this country's citizen base is. I got to tell you, celebrity. It, I think celebrity. she could win. Yeah, she could win. This if is, Trump won, she could win. And who was there with right. him? Who was there with Kanye? James Brown, the former James fr- Jim Brown. Jim Brown. Jim Brown. Jim Brown. The hardest working man in show business. Now, no, uh, I, w- I wonder how Trump felt about that because do you remember what Jim Brown was besides being a football player was famous for? Yes. What the music? Raping Raquel Welch. Well, that I think was one of the rumors. Yes, yes, but he was one of the rumors. Yeah, he yeah. was also he was also accused of being a wife beater. Oh, yeah. Well, that's back when that's that was right. when, when that was acceptable. When that right? was okay. Yeah, that was yeah. Okay, when 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 you could use as your excuse, I told her to shut up. <laughs> you know. Um, <laughs> Yeah, she has two black. The joke goes. The dark joke goes. She had, she has two black eyes. Well, I told the bitch to, to shut up once. She wouldn't listen, so I hit her again. Yeah. Well, anyway. So um, um, now wow. here, look, can I tell you a great story? Though? <laughs> Years ago, I was having an affair with a woman who shall go nameless, uh, of who was a major writer here in New York City uh, for New York Magazine, and. Um, she lived, uh, I can't remember where, and she decided she was going to take this hippie and give me New York culture, you know. And, um, but also, well, also she wanted my dick. So that was the, the main thing. And oh, you I, wanted her so, cut. So. so I would do my show at uh, WPLJ, and I would get off at 6 o'clock in the morning, and then I would take a cab over to her place, okay, and I would uh, uh, we'd be fool around. Now, who lived under her, right under her, in the apartment right under her, was Gloria Steinem. Oh, yeah. And every that. morning as I was coming in, so her boyfriend at the time, the guy <laughs> she was seeing, was leaving. And who was it? Jim James Brown. Brown. The football player? He yes, played? Jim Brown. Jim and Brown. I'm thinking to myself... Wow. What's she doing with the wife beater? She's Ms. 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 You know? Well. I could never figure that one out. 12 inches. A complicated 12 inch relationship. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And and it got to a point where uh, I would be coming so regularly and he'd be leaving so regularly that we'd always say hi to each other in the hallway. You know, hi, Jim. Hi, Alex. <laughs> See you later. Okay, have a nice day. Boom, boom, boom. Did people find out about this affair, Alex? Huh? And did people find out about this I affair, I don't Alex? know, and maybe not until now. <laughs> but, uh... And you uh, said you ever... were name it, you know, you make it easy for some asshole to, you know, snoop around. Uh, who lived, uh, who was Gloria Steinem live, living beneath... Well, this And this was at the time <laughs> that she was doing the whole Ms. Magazine thing and everything. This was during that period of time. And I just, it always, you know, I, I knew what he had been accused of, and I went, you know, but yet she's still seeing him. Uh, so I always wondered about that. But anyway, but they're both alive and they can sue me for what I just said, so. 
They can sue Gabnet out of existence. Hey, you get 20% yeah. of nothing, then. Yeah, yeah. Well, don't make me feel bad. 20% of, I don't know, a dollar and a half, okay? Yeah. I'll sue you, I'll sue you Bennett, out. for everything you have. Oh, really? The lawyer's going to cost deceased, more money. He? What? He's, he's, he's deceased, right? No, Jim Brown? No, not James Brown, not... Not no, it's a singer. He's I'm, also gone. I'm talking about yeah, Jim Brown. The mo the mo he was a movie star later on. Oh, I thought he was dead, too. Okay. Nope. No, no. He was at this thing with Kanye West today with a cane oh, and with a beard oh and look looking old. Oh. He had that Uncle Remus look going for him. <laughs> you know. Uh, wow. But, uh, he was a damn good player. Uh, that's what I hear. That's he really only played it. for eight years. He retired pretty early, if I remember right. Yeah. Hey, Scott. Hey, Scott. Uncle Rim Job. That's the Uncle Reamer or Uncle Rim Job. <laughs> <laughs> Brian, I, you know, there are times I just don't know what to think about you. <laughs> what to think about that, boy? Well, you're not the only one. Take solace in that. Yeah. But anyway, well, if you Scott, get it, are you if, in the new if, house? If you get a chance, you know, like you can find it on... Uh, no, I had on, to move to the... Living room on CBS wow. News. They have you know the CBS News online. Uh, they do, they do have the full meeting with. Trump. And by the way, you should see the look on Trump's face. He's he's uh, he's trying to act like a. He understands what's being said, <laughs> which I couldn't even understand. Okay, and b like he was even fucking interested. He couldn't even understand what's being said yeah. by a by a guy with an IQ of sixty two. Yeah, but, but he also. It's funny when they asked him if you think that Kanye West is going to be the next president. And he's like, hmm, maybe. Yeah, but the thing was that uh, did you see it, Jason? Any of it? I just saw clips of it on the yeah, news. Yeah, I mean, but the you know Trump was, and then at the end Trump was going, <laughs> oh, this was just amazing. This is Trump wonderful. Trump loves celebrity, and any and since most of them shun him, yeah. he's going to show he's going to show uh, a lot of uh, deference to any celebrity that doesn't. Yeah, but on the other hand, I would love to have been there and say to Trump, "Okay, if he was this was so good, what did he just say?" Right. He, it because matter. I couldn't understand it. It made no sense to me. You're saying, Alex, you would have, unlike most, uh, unlike most journalists, you would have asked a viable follow-up. Well, that that's just just me. You most know. of those talking, well, most of those talking heads, if not all those corporate uh, sponsored talking heads, don't ask viable follow-up questions if they even ask. No, them but at if all. if he if he said that, I would say to him, well, tell us what he just said, because quite frankly, I didn't understand a word of it. Because you can listen to this. And it's really the rantings of a guy who's off his, admittedly, off his meds. He said he quit his meds several weeks ago. And the worst thing for black people was slavery ended. <laughs> he, he said something like that. Yeah. It was like freaking off the wall. It was like, the, they, no, he at the one Democrats point, put you into a trap when they ended slavery or something. No, he said, no, he said he was... Famous a while back for saying something to the effect that slavery was good for the blacks. It was a choice because they let it last for two hundred years. Here's what so I it was, it was security. Here's what I don't understand. Years ago, when you all were little children, a guy by the name of Sammy Davis Jr. decided to uh, campaign for Richard Nixon. Now. Sammy Davis Jr. had always been very much a liberal, but he decided he was going to go campaign for Nixon. And at one point, he even hugged Richard Nixon. And that completely made him an anathema to the black community. They completely well, wrote him off because there he is hugging the most vile human being in America at the time. And so consequently... I wonder what is going to happen now that Kanye West went over today to Donald Trump and hugged him. Oh, yeah. I, I wonder what Trump was thinking. Was he? Yeah. <laughs> that. Tr uh, Trump. But the other yeah. Yes, yes, to Brian. You and then Ray. Right. Uh, I was just going to say, um, um, 
uh, if you're familiar with the guy, uh, liberal philosopher, uh, I call him a philosopher, Chris Hedges, who uh, has said that uh, in retrospect, Richard Nixon in the last 50 years may may would very well be our last liberal president on account of what that administration has given us, OSHA, EPA, mm -hmm. so on mm -hmm. and so forth. So, you know, although in circa 19... Uh, 70 whatever whenever it was uh, that uh, sammy davis jr did this and granted at that time he may have been regarded as a pariah by his own community 50 some odd years later 40 some odd years later yeah well you know what we uh, have uh, now and what we had have uh, had now uh, including the disgusting clintons richard uh, nixon was a republican but at that time uh being a conservative was a problem he wasn't a conservative republican he was a Middle of the road Republican, pretty much, you know. It doesn't look yeah, so he, bad he, today. According to oh, him, as I said, compared to age. compared to Trump, he doesn't look too bad. Neither do the Bushes. In fact, neither does Adolf Hitler. According to the Hedges, <laughs> though, those agencies were created because he was afraid of he was that afraid of movements of liberal movements, you know. Yeah. yeah. Encroaching on him. Yeah. But you, okay, Ray, you had your hand up. Oh, I just wanted to say I looked up uh, James, James Brown and Gloria Steinem. So he wrote in his autobiography that he had an affair with her. Oh. A lot of people don't believe it. Well, um, I saw it from my own two eyes, although yes, I was not. Now we know I, it's true. I was not sure. in the room while they and, were fucking. Uh, it started after she interviewed him for the magazine, mm -hmm. and then uh, his current girlfriend at the time got jealous, and he ended up throwing her down the stairs in addition to his wife that he already beat up before that. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, let one base, let one football player kneel during the national anthem, and everybody loses their fucking mind. Yeah, right. Exactly. Uh, but you know, yeah, uh, uh, I'm here to tell you that. Uh, did the, do they say in that? Uh, I guess it's Wikipedia, right? No, it's no, it's just some. Uh, it's what the hell is that? Did it say that he was that he was alleged? They said that he was alleged to, but nobody believed him. Well, it says it says here. You know, it says he he says in his autobiography, which sort of implies, you know, who knows if it's true. Or well, not. it is absolutely yeah. true because I saw yeah. him ev at least. Uh, you know, five mornings that I went over to uh, this woman's place. Uh, uh, and if I said her name, a lot of people in New York would know who she was. Uh, I don't even know if she's still alive or not. But uh, I, I, I did see James Brown. It was, def you know, it was definitely James Brown. It says that uh, Brown's fling with Steinem stirred up jealousy with his then girlfriend, Eva Marie Bone Chin. <laughs> Kickstarting an argument that resulted in Brown being accused of tossing Bone Chin down a balcony. Oh. Wow. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> I thought he broke a few of the bones in the man's man. Yeah, well. <laughs> Shit, the man's man, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But so I never I never understood that relationship, to be very honest with you. you know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But uh, I got to meet James Brown. I never wow. met Gloria Steinem, though. She never came out the door with him. <laughs> I met her in later years, and I didn't say to her, you know, I used to live, I'd go to see somebody upstairs, and I used to see James Brown leaving your apartment every morning. I didn't. You I met didn't, her when the bruises cleared a few yeah, years later. That relationship yeah. was a hit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I interviewed her. I liked her actually. I I thought I, I I always found her a little obnoxious, and when I interviewed her, I kind of liked her. You know, sometimes you're pleasantly surprised by certain people you wind up interviewing. Uh, yeah. I mean, t the time I uh, interviewed Adolf Hitler, I was amazed at how affable he was, and um, <laughs> how uh, how you know how how down to earth he could get in just a, a private situation. So, well, he's still alive down in uh, Argentina or something. Yeah, so he, maybe you no, can it's Brazil. Him. He's running for president. He's running oh, for Brazil. Okay, he's running for president. You see the the freaking uh, conservative they have down in Brazil running for president. He won. He didn't win, but he got the primary runoff. Yeah, yeah, and they're afraid he's actually going to become uh, uh, president of Brazil. You know, uh, guys, freaking. He's a nut job. Yeah, he, do, he does the cool finger. He always, he's, always, he's always no. He does the finger. Down to earth, he could get he, in just a, a private. He does the, the, the Go he, ahead, hit me, oh, hit me. I'll hit you back. He, do, he back. does the he's finger guns. Oh, it's Brazil. He's running for president. He's running. Oh, Brazil. Okay. He's got finger guns. 
<laughs> you see the the freaking uh, conservative they have down in Brazil running for president. He won. He didn't wait, win, but he got the primary. Wait, runoff. wait, wait. Hold on yeah. a second. Uh, 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 afraid he's got, actually hey, going to become. Hey, uh, hey. Uh, Do you hear that sound, Jack? Yeah. You hear that sound? It's your audio. Yeah, he does, he does the cool, finger. He always, he always, he no, Jack. He the finger. Down Hold the on, Jack. Wait a minute, everybody. I, be quiet. Jack, you hear audio. Your audio. Jack, Don't you hear that, Jack? Oh, Brazil. Okay. He's got fingers, Jack. <laughs> there you go. The, no, the that's not it either. I'm gonna hang. Up I'm gonna hang up on Jack. I can't take this. Oh boy. <laughs> he didn't realize he was feeding back all that. Oh. <laughs> I muted myself because the first voice I heard was me, so I thought it was me. I found like I felt I like almost, a, I almost freaked out. I, I felt. I felt. I, I, yeah. Talking, his lips aren't moving. I, I felt like I was in a fucking Who time war. my Perrier? <laughs> yeah, Jack, if you're listening, you had your audio up, and it was coming back and coming back and coming back in a loop, and I had to hang up on you because it was driving us. Oh, here we go again. All right, it. any bets, it still happens. Jack needs a high tech. Uh, hello, hello. Lesson. Jack, are you there? Jack, Jack. Yes, I'm here. I'm here. Yeah. I'm sorry about that. I, I had my monitor feeding back through the board. I'm. I heard you guys. I heard you guys talking about the most despicable man. Can we see? I ever can we see on. your video now? Yeah. Oh, let me turn my video on. There we go. Not that yeah. James Brown. No. <laughs> yeah. No, uh, uh, Alex. When I left Houston and you were going to Chicago, mm -hmm. I went to work for James Brown and worked for him for almost four years through. Uh, but we're not talking about despicable people. Well, oh, he was despicable. No, but we're, no, but we're not talking about despicable people. How did you bring that up? Well, you heard, I heard you talking about James Brown. No, I said that I used to meet him every morning as he was leaving Gloria Steinem's apartment, and I couldn't Damn understand Brown. why she was fucking him because uh, 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 he was known to be a wife beater. Yes, yes, he was. I didn't say he was the most uh, disgusting and, person I ever met. In fact, he was quite charming, and we got to know each other every morning, waving goodbye as we were going. He made his booty call, and I was on to mine. Well, one of the things that I wound up having to do one time during the uh, time that I was working for Mr. Brown, as he liked to be called, mm -hmm. uh, was to defuse a situation where he had... Uh, beaten up a woman in, a, in Augusta, Georgia. Oh, okay. And uh, uh, there, there were so many times that uh, I got to the point where I could not stand to be in the same room with the man. Mm -hmm. And that's when I knew no matter how much money he was uh, paying me, no matter what kind of uh, rewards I might have had professionally, had to get my ass away from him before I killed the son of a bitch. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, I've known people like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, that now that brings it around to the wife beating. So that's very good. Thank you, Jack. I appreciate it. The story is now all worth it. Why didn't you just uh, at some point when you were finally leaving refer to him as "See you later, Jimmy"? Well, I just wanted to get away. I just didn't want to. It, it took. You want me, to be his next bitch? Really? Uh, it <laughs> took me. It took me ten years to get to the point where I did not hear the man's name and get angry. Yeah. And I kept running, you know, over the years I've run into friends who knew that I worked for him because I was the national program director for his chain of stations. Yeah. They all asked me, including a cousin of mine who's a musician, what yeah. was it like? And I said it was like being um, somebody's bitch yeah. every day for everybody that worked for him. Yeah. It was like, By the way, it was like the, yeah. the old version of Sarah Sanders. Uh, yeah. right? <laughs> uh, by the way, Patrick has his hand up. Yes, Patrick. Um, just to clarify, because it does get a bit confusing, the gentleman you knew, Alec, was Jim Brown, the football player. Right. Okay. Yes. Oh, oh. I, I know that guy. Right. That, and that was when I... Yeah, Did you think I was saying James Brown? Yes. No. Yes, I, I, no, it's Jim Brown. I, 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 
a reaction. Anytime I hear Brown, I think of James Brown. No, it was Jim Brown, and uh, he was uh, he was uh, he was dating not dating. I think he was just booty booty calling. Uh, uh, Gloria Steinem and we bump and into each other. They both had wife beating in common. As so I was, as I, I was going to my beauty that. call. <laughs> now I didn't know about Jim Brown being a wife. Beater. We were Betty. Oh we yeah. Were, we were. We were. We were. Uh, we were. Uh, 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 kind of uh, uh, booty call besties. And Alex, yeah. I thought you knew what uh, the confusion was. I thought you were just deliberately trying to fuck with. Mr. No, Bishop. I didn't know that. No, no, no. Uh, well, it would be an easy day to just to fuck with him because it's been one of those days. Yeah, it's been one of those days. Yes, uh, 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 Patrick? Yeah, and the only reason they were confusing is you were going between using the term Jim and James Brown for the football player. Yeah. Oh, that's not the only reason. Well, <laughs> for the <laughs> wife beating, too, like I said. That was a weird time for me. <laughs> well, no, you have to realize that that, that Jack still has PTSD uh, <laughs> from working for Jim Brown. James Brown. James Brown. <laughs> now he's just fucking. Oh. Yeah. Take me to the bridge. Little Jimmy Brown. Okay. That's another song. That's uh, the the uh, the three Brown song from 1956. The three bells. Yeah, yeah. Boy, you sure remember the crap. Hey, that, that was a hey, terrible song. It was, it was, but not all of us were able to have the glorious intellectual career that you had. Some of us were just grateful to have a paycheck every couple of weeks. That's, and that's another thing. I didn't get paid with, by James Brown for two months once. Oh, boy. Why Jesus didn't you get Christ. paid by him? That would have fucked me up. I would have uh, started getting lippy with him. I don't care how famous he is. You fuck with my money and that's it. So well, we, had, we had bought the first radio station, which was in Knoxville, Tennessee, mm -hmm. and the guy that hired me had been my operations manager in Houston, and James Brown and his uh, garage, and he had a great business manager who, who couldn't control him, James would not give his business manager, who was a uh, an alumnus of Wall Street, guy with a, uh, a CPA uh, from uh, some big Eastern school. He wouldn't give him the money to start a bank account to pay us. So I spent, uh, I spent November and December with no paycheck. Luckily, I had some money saved up, and I was able to to coast. And you know, I never lived extravagantly. So I got by, but uh, uh, I remember that Christmas, Christmas dinner for me was a grilled cheese sandwich. Let me ask you a question, though, <laughs> as, as, a, uh, as a Negro American. That's what you like to be yes. called these days, right? Negro. I like my they Negro. Don't, uh, yeah. no, I, but I prefer being called a spear chunker, but that's another oh, story. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> well, yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, 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 I uh, would like to get a black person's opinion of, of the wonderful philosophy. Uh, it's like 23% Mick. In, 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 in part Scottish, in, in, for God's in, sake. In the, uh, in the Oval Office today with Kanye West. Well, I was thinking about that as I was uh, coming home from the eye doctor, mm -hmm. and I thought, Kanye, we need to take away your black guy card. Yeah, yeah. It needs to be revoked. Yeah. Uh, at least with, not, you know, James Brown supported Richard Nixon. Yes, right. right. We mentioned that earlier. And uh, so, did, so did Sammy uh, Davis Jr. So did Sammy Davis Jr. Who got vilified by the black community for hugging. Richard Nixon, and today, guess what Kanye West did to Donald Trump? I saw. He yeah. hugged him. He hugged him. Ew. Yeah, I know. Isn't that icky? Well, yeah, the grease. Well, look. Here's the problem that the you have. Does. Here's the problem that you have with guys who uh, were poor and then suddenly make a lot of money. Mm -hmm. They really begin to believe that they're going to get invited to the country club. No, well, they're wrong. Hey, Jason. Yeah. Jason's got his hand up. So, this is why I have to ask you, Jack. Don't you think that actually the black community is secretly re uh, Republicans and they don't realize it because a lot of their uh, 
their their beliefs as far as homosexuality, religion, mm-hmm. abortion. You know, a lot of their beliefs. You know, at least here in Detroit, where I see, mm-hmm. you know, they'll sit there and say they're a Democrat all day long, but then I sit there and listen to their social beliefs. And it's like, dude, you're not a Democrat. You're a Republican. well. You know, I wonder when we're going to suddenly separate our social beliefs from our political beliefs. Right. Yeah. You know, because I think that it, it's it's kind of sickening that yeah. uh, that that we don't separate those. That you but s- it, it's all in the same because the political that, parties make religious beliefs too. I mean, you should be able to be a Republican who believes in abortion. Right. Okay. Should be able to. You know, because the two one libertarians one, do. Yeah. Well, I mean, but we're talking about social ethics as opposed to. Uh, well, when you sit there and you're anti-abortion, you know you're anti, you know, you're anti-homosexuality, mm-hmm. you're anti, you know, all this and that that the Republicans are, and you know what I see working in Detroit, you know, a lot of the community in Detroit is, I I wonder how you do not call yourself a Republican because you're anti all of this and that, you know, with your social beliefs. Well, well Jason, I'm going to answer your uh, your question. Uh, up until the uh, uh, 1930s in Franklin Roosevelt, the black community in America yeah. traditionally had voted Republican. Hey, because it was a Republican party that you know ended slavery. Yeah. 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 But I think more importantly is what you hit upon is I always jokingly tell my black friends who say, well, why the hell are you a Unitarian? And I said, because I've read some books along the way. Uh, but, uh, uh, yes, uh, I would say many black people in this country, if the Republican party would say, all right, you know, we do believe in equality of opportunity, et cetera, et cetera, would be Republicans. But they, but we know that when they talk about equality, it's for the sons of of the well-to-do. But, you know, here's a good question. You used to have a thing in the South called the Dixiecrats. Basically, they were Democrats who were Southerners. And they were racist, and they were everything else, okay? Uh, uh, What happened to the Dixiecrats? I think they became Republicans, didn't they? Well, does anybody besides me and Alex remember the Nixon Southern strategy? I know that. I know the term, but I I wasn't following politics like that back in those days. My father wasn't even jacking off yet, so no, I don't remember. Well, (laughs) I read about it. Slow learner, huh? Uh, uh, (laughs) When Lyndon Johnson signed the Civil Rights Act of the 60s, he turned to some of his democratic cohorts and said we have lost the south for at least a generation yeah mm-hmm. and uh nixon very quickly glommed on to what had actually happened and you started seeing droves and droves of what had been southern white democrats because that was the party that they affiliated with because of the Civil War suddenly flipped over when you started seeing black kids and white kids and Chinese kids and uh, any other Mexicans Mexicans as we say here in Texas uh, suddenly going to school together Uh, a, a good friend of mine from Houston was amongst the first kids to go into an integrated school system in Houston, Texas. When Alex and I were working together, I met this guy. And he told me about the kind of stuff that he endured going to, I can't remember the school, but going through that. you know. And I'm sitting there, you know, I'm as black as he is, and maybe a little blacker except for that 23% Irish and Scottish I found out about here a few weeks ago. I, I, I couldn't have lived like that. There are dead honkies on the floor in that high school. I had them in there. Anyway, you got to go and go do oh, a show. Oh, I'm almost ready to do a show, aren't yeah, I? Yes, you are. I, do I have to remind you? 
Uh, it helped. Uh, yeah. Uh, thank you, Jack. Hey, listen, thanks to all of you. This has been a great little uh, happy fizzies party here tonight. We've hardly delved into politics at all. Isn't that uh, wonderful? Uh, the history of politics. What'd you say? What? The history of politics. The history of politics we got into. But Hey, thank you, Rob. I appreciate it. I appreciate all you do for us, too. Thanks for the new spot, which I will put together tomorrow. Uh, to Brian, thank you for joining us. Patrick, always a pleasure. Ray, it was nice having lunch with you here in New York. Same here, Alex. Yeah. Uh, 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 Scott, you got to come to New York. Let me go to lunch with you. I've been to lunch with Jeff. And uh, Jason, you come to New York and have lunch with me, too. Everybody, come to New York. I'll buy you all lunch, okay? Give a big wave goodbye to the people out there who are watching so they know you're going away. That's our, that's our citizen panel, folks. That's what they look like, and that's where they are. That's it for tonight. Uh, I'm Alex Bennett. I will be here again uh, tomorrow night right uh, after us. Uh, Jack has the intersection followed at 1 o'clock this morning by Connections. Tomorrow night, Damian Chaplin with the exchange. And then at 10 o'clock, Eastern Daylight Time, same time, same station in life. I'll be right back here. And if you see her, as always, tell her I love her. Okay? Bye. <laughs>